So we all know who Spider-Man is. Unless you're someone who's been living in a bomb shelter for 80 or so years and just came out and discovered the internet. In which case, hi, welcome to YouTube. Sorry you're here. But have you ever really sat down and analyzed what the webhead can actually do? I mean, looking at his powers and abilities beyond just a surface level? No? Nobody has time for that? Well, guess what? I make YouTube videos for a living, so I have time for that. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking a more analytical eye to the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Peter Parker's abilities, including his physical capabilities, wall crawling, enhanced senses, and even the additions to his power set his Stark Tech gives him. I'll also throw in some comic-based info if and when appropriate so that we might get a more full view of what he might be able to do. Also, if you're arachnophobic, maybe skip this one as I will be talking about and showing actual spiders, so you've been warned. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. So let's start this off by taking a look at the most ho-hum of all his superhero abilities, that being his physical enhancements. Okay, so maybe not ho-hum, but come on, most of these are things that pretty much every hero has. However, Peter Parker's specific enhancements are in a lot of ways a cut above pretty much everyone else. Let's start off with his superhuman strength. In Civil War, we see him catch a car and stop it in its tracks, and that's pretty impressive. And we are told that his strength is proportional to that of a spider. But what does that actually mean? Well, let's look at the strongest spider in the world, the Darwin's Bark Spider. This arachnid can lift up to 80 grams, which might not sound like much, until you realize that the spider itself is roughly only a half a gram. So that means that this spider can lift 160 times its own weight, which is far more impressive. Now let's put that into the context of Spider-Man. Let's assume for this discussion that the 15 or 16 year old Peter Parker weighs around 160 pounds. Might be more, might be less, but just humor me here. This would mean that the one ton or so of car that he caught in Civil War would be basically nothing to him, since he would be capable of lifting around 25,600 pounds. That's 12.8 tons. I guess it's a good thing he doesn't play sports then, because if he tackled someone while playing football, he'd probably kill them. Speaking of which, it's worth pointing out that in the comics, Parker has pointed out that he has to consciously hold himself back while fighting bad guys. Because if he didn't, hitting somebody with a punch would turn them into a puddle. It'd be like playing Doom and getting the Berserk power up, only all the time. And yes, I understand that in reality, this wouldn't exactly work out like this, since the laws of scaling would apply, but hey, this isn't a film theory video, so that's as deep into the math and science as I'm really gonna get. Just keep it at surface level to give you the basic idea of the power level that we're working with here. I mean, as surface level as deep diving into like the actual science of spiders and such can get. Next up is his durability, and there really isn't anything super exciting here. Typical superhero stuff. He can shrug off hits that a regular person would keel over from, being supremely resistant to blunt force trauma and explosive forces. I mean, Vulture dropped a building on him and lived, though he had a little bit of a cry before walking away from it. He also took a choke slam from Thanos, aka the guy who pimp slapped Hulk so hard that he sat Infinity War out. So, you know, he can take a hit. Within the world of spiders, there isn't really anything that could explain this. I mean, there are such thing as armored spiders, but Peter Parker isn't covered in interlocking plates, so I don't think that's really applicable here. Now, I'm gonna couple super speed and agility together here, since they kinda go hand in hand. In short, the dude is hecka fast, not quite speedster fast, like he isn't catching Quicksilver anytime soon, though I suppose you could catch him now, but you know. He is significantly faster than pretty much any human. This speed aids him in dodging as well, allowing him to casually catch a swing from the Winter Soldier as if it were nothing. He can also jump great distances, such as when we saw him leap atop a light pole at the end of Far From Home with little effort. Now, of course, you knew I was gonna bring up jumping spiders here. You know, those horrific demonic beasts with eight legs that spring out at you from the dark? Kinda like that one hiding on the wall next to you right now? So despite being hecka good at jumping, which is caused by them basically having biological hydraulic systems, they can't actually move that fast. Not any more than other spiders. And sure, to us, spiders can often look like quick little buggers, but when you take scale into account, they really aren't that speedy. So where Parker gets it, I have no idea. 
Back to that jumping though. I think that's a fascinating enough thing that I wanted to get into it just a little bit deeper. Basically, jumping spiders are able to achieve the heights and distances that they do by altering the pressure of fluids within their legs, which allows them to be able to jump like they do without having to have the beefcake legs that you commonly see on other jumpers in the insect kingdom, such as grasshoppers. And if Parker can jump like these spiders can, he would be able to do some crazy leaps. Most jumping spiders can cover a distance equal to roughly 50 times the length of their bodies. So assuming that Parker could jump an equivalent amount, he'd be able to hurl his 5 foot 7 inch frame over 250 feet horizontally. That's a bit much. When they jump, most species of jumping spider also first tether themselves to their place of takeoff with a thin thread of webbing, which they do in order to catch themselves in case they fall. And yeah, that's not really something that Parker does. Then again, spiders don't really swing from webs like freaking Tarzan either, so I guess Spider-Man is just not as accurate to actual spiders as we all had hoped. Hate to break it to you guys. Now you've probably noticed that at this point I've yet to talk about his ability to walk on walls. You know, one of the major abilities that makes Spider-Man, Spider-Man. He can walk up walls and stick to surfaces. Not really a ton to talk about there, but you might be interested to learn how this is achieved within the world of arachnids. See, spiders that are capable of climbing walls have legs that are covered in tiny hairs that themselves are covered in little organs that reach out and grab onto small bumps on surfaces, effectively allowing them to stick. While we haven't seen these hairs in the MCU, over in the Raimi films, we did get this shot, showing the tiny hairs on that Peter Parker's fingertips. So, theoretically, this is probably the means by which the MCU Parker also climbs walls. Fun little comic aside here. One of the clones of Peter Parker in the comics once killed a guy by putting his hand on his face, engaging the wall sticking ability, and giving it a good old yank, which is as horrifying as it is cool. And now you have that mental image stuck in your head as well. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go try to wash out my brain of that image and maybe have a good cry. All right, everyone back from having a good cry. Awesome. Now let's talk about the web heads and hand senses. Parker's senses are basically beyond human. He describes them as being dialed to 11, and they really are. His vision is beyond perfect, to the point that the lenses in his masks have to be specially tinted in order to not overload him in the heat of combat. Now this actually makes sense when you look at how things are for spiders. With multiple sets of eyes, most species of spider can see better than you can imagine. Though, fun fact, a lot of them are incapable of perceiving depth, at least not in the same way that we do. You know what they can perceive though? A lot of things that we can't, such as UV rays, both on the UVA and UVB spectrums. So yeah, it makes total sense for Parker to have insano eyesight. He shares this trait with his arachnid brethren. And then there is, of course, his spider sense, or Peter Tingle if you're Aunt May. This is something that comic fans have often discussed amongst themselves. The way it is often presented on the page is basically a sort of extrasensory ability, like telepathy or something like that, allowing him to literally predict things split seconds before they happen. And that is not at all what it is. At least not what it appears to be if you look at how things are within the eight-legged world. See, spiders have tiny hairs all over their bodies that are hypersensitive to vibrations. This is what normally allows them to detect when something has entered their web, even if they are on the complete other side of it. But it can go beyond just sensing vibrations in whatever they're standing on. Some species are even capable of detecting changes in air pressure, usually brought upon by sound or movement. So theoretically, what Parker is actually doing when he's using his spider sense is detecting changes in air pressure which could be brought upon by something like someone swinging a baseball bat in his general vicinity. And the movies kind of back this up. As in Infinity War, we see him detect the presence of the Black Order when the hairs on his arms stand on end. So boom, that's some real science for you. And that brings us to his enhanced reflexes. Now, some of you might have grouped this in with his physical enhancements, and you'd probably be right to do so. I'm not saying that it's here because I forgot to add it into that last part, but it might be something like that. Anyways, it does sort of make sense to discuss them here, as what good or enhanced extra sense is gonna do for you if he can't act on them in a moment's notice. And boy howdy, Parker can act on them lightning fast. His reflexes are far beyond that of not just humans, but literally any other living thing in existence that we know of. He's just straight up able to dodge bullets when his reflexes are paired up with his spider sense. We saw him do just this during his face off with Mysterio's drones. So the dude can move. 
One thing that I kind of struggled to find place for is Parker's healing abilities. Basically, like pretty much every major superhero, Parker has a regenerative healing factor, allowing him to heal his wounds at an accelerated rate over a normal human. Now we aren't talking about anything on the level of say, Wolverine or Deadpool. Like he isn't going to regenerate a limb that gets cut off or anything like that. But he does decently in terms of what most heroes can do. Now as far as what it's like for actual spiders, there isn't much to talk about. Spiders heal in just about the same way as 99.9% .9 of organic creatures on planet Earth. However, there is something that we can talk about here. That being the way that scientists have found uses for spiders in medical applications. Scientists have found that a unique protein structure in spider silk can be used for biomedical implants, such as bone and cartilage replacements. Scientists even think that they'll be able to use this protein structure to help repair nerve system damage as well. The only problem here though is that you can't exactly farm spider silk from spiders. For starters, they have a tendency to eat each other. They are cannibalistic by nature, so you can't really keep a bunch of them in one space without losing at least 50% of them. Extracting spider silk is also a very, very time consuming process, as you have to sit there and pull the strands out of anesthetized spiders by hand. It can be done, it's just not exactly the most fun thing in the world. So, scientists have actually switched over to using silk produced by genetically modified silkworms, meant to mimic the properties of spider silk. And all of this is not quite on the same level as someone just naturally healing faster, but hey, I still think it's cool nonetheless. And it's my video, so it's in. Finally, we've got to talk about Parker's tech. Now right out the gate, I'm not going to get into stuff like Edith. Mostly because the abilities of those glasses, as well as a lot of his Stark tech, are kind of vague and not super well defined. So there isn't really anything I can do to dive too deep into them. I'm sorry to let you down. My disappointment in myself is immeasurable. Let's start off with his web shooters and web fluid. You know, the stuff he made himself. Now, Parker in the MCU doesn't ever really state just how strong his synthetic webs are, but their tensile strength is more than enough to impress Tony Stark which is no easy feat. Within the realm of actual spiders, webbing varies wildly, not just from species to species, but also depending upon the purpose that the spider secretes it to use it for. That might be the grossest word I've ever uttered in a YouTube video. Secretes. Ugh, that's just gross. Spiders are capable of producing several different types of webs. They can range from the not so sticky webbing that they use for the basic superstructure of their home webs to the hyper sticky, which is used for catching prey and wrapping up the tasty morsels that male spiders give to females as gifts. So MJ, get ready for the grossest Christmas present of all time. Now, quite a few species of spider are capable of producing silk that is comparable in strength to industrial, high-grade alloys such as steel. Now again, that's relative, gotta take the law of scale into that. That being said, a small handful of spiders have been found to produce silk that could have industrial uses, such as the previously mentioned Darwin's bark spider, whose silk has been found to have similar properties to Kevlar, you know, the stuff that bullet-resistant vests are made out of. And yes, I said bullet-resistant, not bulletproof. No personal armor is fully bulletproof, that's just a misnomer. So based upon what we know of spider silk, Parker's synthetic webbing seems to share the same properties, just on a larger scale. And it should have no issues holding his weight. So hooray real science! So we should probably talk about the iron spider suit, right? Like, you're all here to hear about that. Well, okay, I'm gonna at least touch upon his extra legs. The four mechanical ones that actually do quite a bit for him. In Infinity War, we see him use them in a more defensive manner, using them to cradle Mantis and protect her from hitting the ground too hard. That is a pretty handy feature. Alternatively, Endgame gave us a more offensive use for them, as he engaged kill mode and the legs burst out, skewering numerous Chitari warriors as he attempted to keep them from claiming the Iron Infinity Gauntlet for Thanos. Now, theoretically, he could use these things for a lot more than just that. While they aren't nearly as flexible as, say, Doc Ock's robot arms, they could still be used for moving around. As far as how they relate to actual spiders, well, if you add them to his already existing arms and legs, it puts him at eight total limbs, just like a spider. So that's cool, I guess. I'm not really sure what to say here. Spiders don't really have metal legs that extend from their back via nanites. That is a Spider-Man exclusive feature. With all that being said, that's a solid look at Spider-Man's abilities and powers. Hopefully all the pictures and footage of spiders didn't freak you out too much. 
Good, I'm glad to hear it. So you should be totally cool hanging out with that spider bro that's dangling above your head right now then. Hey there everyone, I'm John Algets. I made this video and I wanna know what you think. Which other hero should I break down like this? Let me know in the comments below or go ahead and shoot me a response over on Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to CBR for more great videos just like this in the future.